Lewis Carroll's The Walrus and the Carpenter was animated well in Disney's Alice in Wonderland, which is also based on Lewis Carroll's original story by the same name. The story of The Walrus and the Carpenter was told in small part by the twins Tweedledee and Tweedledum, in an effort to delay Alice and keep her company as long as possible. The oysters were curious too, weren't they? Aye. And you remember what happened to them? <laughs> Poor, Poor things. things. <laughs> The story they tell and the lessons you can learn from it are pretty identical to the original poem. However, the story itself plays out a little differently. The walrus and the carpenter are walking along the beach and take notice of the sun and the moon being in the sky at the same time. The sun is shining with all its might and they suppose that the moon is upset being as how it's its time to occupy the sky. The first two plights in the poem are funny and show how they jumble the idea of day and night. The walrus believes that the moon is out, so then the day is done, but the sun is out and so to the walrus's eyes, the sun has no business being there. The walrus and the carpenter walk along the beach. They take disgust with the enormous amount of sand along the shore. They imagine how grand it would be if it was all cleared away. Not long after, the two stumble upon a bed of oysters. Right away, the walrus asks the oysters to follow them for a pleasant walk and a pleasant talk along the beach. Important to note, the walrus never offered them anything, besides his company and conversation, of shoes and ships and sealing wax of cabbages and kings, to talk about why the seas are boiling hot and to whether pigs have wings, all in an effort to entice the young oysters into leaving the seabed. The eldest oyster listened to the walrus and knew he was up to no good. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning to say that he is not going to leave his oyster bed. But that didn't discourage the young oysters who eagerly wanted to join the walrus. First there were four volunteers, and then there were many more that decided to join once their peers accepted the walrus's plea. The wise-talking walrus had gotten his way, and the oysters began to leave the seabed. The young oysters even depicted themselves as fat, unknowingly enticing the walrus and the carpenter, saying that they had trouble breathing as they walked and talked. The carpenter chimed in to say that there was no hurry, and the oysters thanked him for that. As the walrus and the carpenter lead the oysters further onto land, they speak about preparing a sauce. The oysters overhear this and realize the grave mistake they made, and how it's already too late for them to turn back. The walrus doesn't deny their worries and admits their situation, but remains kind as he can given the predicament he's put the oysters in. The carpenter is more conservative, and ignoring the oysters, he asks the walrus if he can cut them both a slice of bread for their meal. Even after the oysters have been eaten, the walrus expresses some remorse, saying that it's a shame to have played such a trick on them after bringing them so far. The carpenter is not so responsive, and complains about how the butter is spread too thick. The walrus, realizing what he has done, even weeps for the oysters. With subs and tears he sorted out those of larger size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his steamy eyes. In the end you learn that the carpenter has not yet eaten the oysters. The carpenter asked the oysters, shall we be trotting home again? But there was nothing but silence, all the oysters had already been eaten by the walrus. The takeaway from the original poem, and Disney's depiction in their Alice in Wonderland movie, is to listen to your elders. The young oysters could have taken note of the eldest oyster's decision to stay, seeing as how he managed to stay alive so long. The second takeaway from this story is not to always follow the leader. The second and largest group of oysters took note of the first four oysters who quickly agreed to follow the walrus. You could acknowledge their caution in comparison to the first four oysters, but the final factor in bringing them onto land was the excitement and trust of the first group. Group thinking can be dangerous, and one should always learn to think for themselves.